talking about AC. And uh, we just recently left New Orleans. We're now uh, in Texas. And um, our new site is actually in the sun pretty much all day. There's a tree beside us, but the way the sun comes uh, by us, we don't really get no shade at all. any shade at all. And so uh, on Facebook, uh, part of the uh, Grand Design Owners and Modifications group keep seeing people that are doing this AC mod. And so um, we figured we'd just give it a shot. And so we're gonna sort of talk through how to uh, get the AC, get access to the AC compartment to just check things if you wanted. And then um, we're gonna go through step by step on how to do this, so. Yep, and I'm also gonna do very quickly as we're going through the process to show you what you should be doing every two or three months to your AC, to your filters, to make sure that you are actually breathing clean air along the way. So we have not luckily changed ours in the last like three or so months. And with dogs and dust and humidity, we're gonna show you what your AC unit should not look like. The first step you need to do uh, would be to turn off your AC. Um, to give you an idea, we've already done this mod on one of our AC units and it's already making a difference. Uh, it's 95 today and we're directly in the sun right now and our house is staying cool even with having this one AC unit um, turned off. So once you turn it off, you want to let it cycle, completely shut off. And then first thing you're going to do is this, if you haven't been doing your normal maintenance, is these two tabs, just sort of push on them. They'll pop down. So and even for a short person, it's very easy to get to. And this is exactly what I was talking about earlier about your basic maintenance. Again, I purposely let these get dirty for about a month or so to show you what we deal with with humidity, dog hair, and other things. So this is the kind of stuff that is going through your air. See, chunks like that. So like Jeff said, just pop those off and these also come out and he'll show you how to do that. And then so for these, if you're a large fingered guy like me, you can grab a credit card or you can sort of slide them and work them until they pop off. Um, I, what I've found that works, at least worked on the other one, is if you push on one end or the other, you'll be able to get a grab a hold of it. And then I slide them out. And then mm -hmm. Amanda will take these and clean these up. Yummy. But we're gonna pop the other one off real quick. And you should never have to like muscle through um, what you're working with. That's the goal is to not have to muscle muscle it because once you do that, you're probably breaking something because it's plastic. Yep, and so, so I get to go take care of these in just a minute. And just going to show you what we're going to use to put up in that AC duct to help better divert the air. All right, so um, pretty much it's super simple some HVAC tape or actual like AC ducting tape. Um, it's the metal backed tape. I think this was actually the most expensive thing. Uh, a 30 yard roll was uh, 21, 21 or $23 yeah. at Lowe's. And then some project foam. Uh, if you just type in foam, if you go into one of any of your big box stores, uh, it'll send you to the aisle where all the insulation is. This was just sitting in a little box right at the uh, one of the end caps. So I think these were five dollars each, and we got uh, three of them just in case I messed something up. Now, on to disassembly of the unit. So for this unit, um, it comes in two separate pieces underneath, and what we're going to do is we're going to take out these four screws here. And what they do is they use a square Phillips bit combination. So I always try to use just the square bit. It seems to work a lot better. You don't run the risk of stripping your screws out quite as bad. And so we'll pop those out and pull the first piece down and we'll talk about what we're looking at. Like I said, I let the air filter gather up dust and stuff for about a month or so, but this kind of shows you if you let you know, if you're not doing proper maintenance on your air system, that that is what you and potentially that your family and your kids and stuff are breathing in. And for people um, that don't do this for years, think about what years of buildup looks like. One thing I'm gonna talk about is we normally run with these, uh, what they call AC dump, dumps open because we like keeping our room a little bit cooler. 
Um, and when we closed them, you'd hear like a, that faint whistling sound. I can't replicate it. It's just one of those sounds that uh, is annoying when you're sleeping. Very annoying. But also having your AC cycle on and off all the time is very annoying as well. And so we're going to take this all the way out. And if this is stuck when you're lowering this, it shouldn't be. Don't jerk on it too hard and uh, just try and figure out where it's caught and then we'll go from there. Now at this point you have the inner cover. Um, I'm sure there's a fancy name for it, but basically it's four screws that were opposite uh, or on the angles of the other four. We'll pop those out. And it doesn't matter if you mix the screws up because they're all the same length and same size. And then what I'm going to do for my last screw is I'm going to push and hold in the center until I get that screw out. And then once again, it should just very gently just come down. One thing you do need to remember, actually, um, I have a picture of this already, but you need to remember how it went, whether it was this way or this way. It's pretty straightforward, but just so if you're doing this and you have a different unit than ours, we have the... Uh, Coleman mock unit, but you want to make sure you take a picture as you disassemble because it makes reassembly a whole lot easier. That's something that I always do if I am unsure of how to put something back together or even where the screws go or where something should line up. I always take pictures and put things in piles. Now at this point what you're looking for is we're looking for gaps. So there are photos on the internet where there were basically manufacturing issues where the ducting wasn't lining up um, up here or where there wasn't tape like ours isn't necessarily taped but it does uh, uh, taped everywhere at least but it does appear to be pretty sealed sealed pretty well and then my other AC unit was actually sitting like that and so what that was allowing is that was allowing air colder cold air that's coming from the blow off uh, from the AC to go into the return or the intake for the AC itself so it's basically recycling the air right here um, at this point you can pull this out and the piece that they use they use weather stripping with some insulating board um, we're gonna hold on to this but we're not gonna keep it and then at this point you are ready to start measuring for your unit First thing that we're going to do is uh, we're actually going to measure to replace this. Now the way they used it, they used weather stripping on the side um, or something like weather stripping. But as you can tell, like this is a, basically a less than a year old unit. It's already starting to fall apart. So we're going to not use this piece and uh, we're going to custom cut uh, our own piece for when we go to do this. Now, um, if you recall, this piece was fitting in right actually like this and so we're gonna measure across which we're gonna try and measure at the widest point so for in this case it's gonna be 14 inches for us and then one of the things is when you measure how far down you want this piece to come you have to account for the fact that we're gonna be putting a bottom piece onto this and so it's gonna need to be one inch shorter than what you would think and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put my tape measure right at one inch right on this metal lip i'm just going to draw a quick reference line it doesn't have to be perfect i don't know if you can even see that line but um right here and we're going to measure from the top down to that line and we're going to cut everything on the slightly larger side not so much that it's like pushing against the walls but we do want it to fit in there pretty snug and so we're going to do 14 by four and a half for this first piece and so we're going to measure it out and then cut it um when we go to cut this i'm going to use a jigsaw i call it a jigsaw anyway it's the fastest way i tried using a razor blade i didn't like how it was turning out it wasn't straight um and I didn't want to cut myself. So we're going to do a 14 by uh, four and a half inch piece. 
we'll do a test fit it's a slow process when you first do this but i want every piece to be perfect because i don't want to have to do it again and so that's what we're going to do now Fourteen by four and a half piece. We're gonna do a quick test fit. And like I said, we do want it to be pretty snug. And in this case, it just fit almost perfectly. I'm gonna put the finished side, so to speak, the side that I didn't cut at the bottom, because I do want it to sit very, very flush at the bottom. And I know that I'm gonna tape here and here when I'm done with everything. I'm gonna tape it uh, with the uh, foil with the HVAC tape and we'll go from there. So, now, the next piece that we're gonna be cutting is going to be an angular piece. Grab my pen for an example. Pull that out. It's gonna be an angular piece that goes from this duct from the, uh, from the, in, from the uh, outflow. So basically, it's gonna look on angle like that. And so that's the measurement I need to make is I need to measure from here to here, basically right like that. Um, now, if you have a fabric tape measure, this would be a great time to use it. In this case, my measurement's roughly four and a half uh, inches. And then the other thing I also want to make sure I do when I do this is I'm going to put this exactly flush with uh with the bigger hole the intake hole and i also need to measure from here to here so in this case it's going to be about eight and a quarter i'm going to double check down here make sure i'm even we're going to do a four and a half by eight and a quarter square and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my jigsaw put it totally uh, all the way over to its most extreme angle cut the angles that I need because I do want this to sit flush and if I have to I'll make some adjusting cuts from it and then uh, stick it up there and I'll see it we'll see how it fits so what we're doing now is we're gonna put it at the most this at it's uh, at the 45 degree angle mark and then just so I know it doesn't really matter how I cut it um, or from which side but I know that I need it one cut to go like that and the other side to be the opposite and then if I do the same thing on here just a quick reference I know that's not where I'm actually going to be cutting but it helps me keep from cutting the wrong angle on the wrong side and I was kind of weary about this with Jeff using a you know a power tool for just foam but scoring it with you know a knife or something just wasn't working so this works best and then when I go to cut this um, you can measure it's doesn't have to be that precise it's not like woodworking um, so what I'm gonna do is when the blade matches up with right there on that corner I'm just gonna try and basically keep the tip of this blade right along this corner the whole way down it's not gonna be perfect but it doesn't have to be which is kind of nice because the tape is gonna seal it anyway mm -hmm. Not the best cut, but it works. I think it's the best cut. <laughs> Thanks, look. And then because we don't, we are going to be putting this in our air system, try and get all the little uh, articles off as much as possible before we even get it up in there and tape it. When you go to put this in, you're going to notice that there's a, a bolt right here. Um, I'm going to show you how I measured for this. It's a very sophisticated measuring technique. So I'm going to yeah, put this okay, up, buddy. up right here. Then basically it's going to be right up here against the bolt. Like I said, this is very scientific. I'm going to push, push a little bit. And then for me, since I'm cutting at a 45 degree angle, all I do is I cut about a quarter of an inch past the angle cut real quick. And I'll have the notch that will be perfect for that bolt. So I'm going to go do that real quick. I'll be right back. 
All right, then, so notches cut, like I said, just a little bit past the, uh, where the angle was. We're gonna just set it up in here. And what I do is I like to match it up at the top and then just kind of ride it up in there. And then you'll see once we have our tape in, that'll be a nice flush fit. And we're nice, well, we're pretty close to flush there, some tape. And actually, oh, we are flush. So we are flush right there as well for that side. And then pretty straightforward, we're gonna do the same thing for the other side and go from there. And so for this one, my measurements from the edge to there are five and a half. I already know it's going to be my eight and a quarter. So we're gonna go cut uh, five and a half by eight and a quarter. Um, not gonna record this next part. Uh, I'll probably throw a time lapse in on it. Notch it out and everything, we'll stick it up there. And then we'll start talking about- uh, What to do next? What we're gonna do for the bottom, so. So we finished the top part. Um, five and a half and uh, four and a half by eight and a quarter. This isn't taped up yet, but once this is all taped, this will all be snugged. This will be taped down and there won't be any gaps. Of note, when you're putting these pieces on, it's more important that the vent is flush right here than it is up here. We can, you can always tape that in this huge opening, but we're focusing on getting air into the actual uh, ducting system. And so I'm gonna pull these down because they're gonna fall out anyway for right now. And then uh, we're gonna work on the bottom piece. Which is what I like to call the TP. <laughs> the bottom piece is where we line this up and we're gonna cut a board that's gonna go in right here. And so we're gonna measure to, in this case, it's gonna be what looks like nine and a quarter. We're measuring to the outside of this board. I'm gonna measure in a couple spots because I do wanna make sure nine and a quarter again. Um, and we already know that this was 14, but if you are unsure of the bottom, go ahead and check. But in this case, it is 14. And so we're basically gonna cut a nine and a quarter by 14 square. And then what we'll do is we'll slide it in, push it up against these bolt holes. We're going to trim back the bolt holes approximately, what looks to be about an inch or so. So we can slide in right there. And then uh, I'm also gonna show you what we're gonna do to direct the airflow versus coming down and crashing and then spinning around in its fluid environment. We're gonna put what Amanda calls her teepee to where it directs the flow into the uh, vents themselves. Of note, we already did this on one and the amount of air that's coming out right now is just insane uh, compared to what the first one was when we just had the dump vents closed on everything. So doing pretty good so far. I'm pretty happy. One of the things to note is the measurements I'm using may not work for your rig. Here's a great point. It's 14 on the inside, but because of how there's a lip here all the way around, we're not going to be able to get it in once this whole thing's completed because we'll literally be going like this. And then we, the goal is to just very gently push this in we don't want that much stress on it. So, I'm gonna cut a quarter of an inch off of one side. And we're gonna measure again. Um, That's why you always like measure a little bit over versus being super precise or trying to narrow it down. Like it's okay if you have to cut because if you cut something too small, then you gotta trash the piece. Yeah, but it is a five dollar piece of project board. So, but so we're gonna cut this down to. Uh, Cut it down by a quarter of an inch and we'll try again. Got it cut down on another little quarter of an inch and you can see that it's still slightly too large. That's the goal is for at least for what I'm trying to do. It's because I can slightly press on this and push it up and in. And then once it's in, I don't really have to worry about it moving around too much. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna push it 
what I'm doing is I'm trying to create the grooves right here so I can cut out for the where the bolts that actually hold the AC unit onto the roof are. And so we're just going to push, push, and then pull it back over here into the middle, take it down. And you can see I have where the, I don't know if you can see that very well, but mm -hmm. where the grooves are. And I know I need to cut about an inch or so in right there, so it'll just slide right in. So that's next. We got the screw holes cut. Just give you a quick show of what those look like. Just quick, easy. They don't have to be clean cuts or anything. Um, the amount of, for when we get done with this, it's just gonna sit in there. But the goal is, is that we used to stop right here and we wanna be able to snug this up in. And then this top piece will sit flush right like that and create a box. Um, we're not quite there yet. There's one other thing we're gonna do with this piece. Um, which is? Which is Amanda's TP, as she likes to call it. For our AC, this is the general design. And so we're gonna turn it sideways for you guys. And so we have ducting that comes in here or that feeds to the rest of the camper on either side so it's going to push air this way so remember these were those uh where jeff pushed the foam up against those bolts right in there so that's what that is this is kind of like that side there and so pretty straightforward we're just going to put basically what's going to look like this is a little teepee mm -hmm. um that is uh basically going to redirect the air so when you go to cut these two pieces right here um we're gonna cut a four inch and three inch, so like four inches and then a three inch piece, and I'll show you how that's gonna work. But take the time, pull this whole system out just like this, and we're gonna measure from the edge of there to here. It should still be eight and a quarter for me, but always double check just in case. And in this case, it is still eight and a quarter. Look at there. Um, and so yeah, I'm gonna go cut an eight and a quarter inch by four inch piece and an eight quarter inch by three inch piece so we cut our four inch piece cut a 45 degree angle on one side we cut our three inch piece with a 45 degree angle on one side and so what we're going to do is they're going to go together pretty much right like that and create amanda's tp tent whatever she's choosing to call it um, structure it's a structure basically it's to redirect the air um, for where we want to go so before we tape this down you want to grab your tape measure we know that this thing is 14 inches um, we want to make sure that we put the center directly in the center of the airflow so a quick mark what we're going to do Take this and we want the point on this because this is going to be like this is one side and this is the other we want the point to be at that seven inch mark right there in the middle which i think looks pretty good we created a we created that triangle to redirect the airflow and we have taped it up with the tape not sure if you necessarily need it because it is actually an insulating board but we did it just because honestly I, I think it i think it's going to pay dividends in the long run and so the next piece that we're going to do is we basically go in and we're going to go up into the ac unit and we're going to put it together or uh, do the ducting tape up in the ac unit this stage all we're doing is we're fitting in these pieces that we we're, we had a dry fit in with earlier and we're going to tape it with the uh, with the ducting tape. So one of the things you have to be really mindful of is we don't want to block we don't want to block the ducting down here so as we go to tape this we're going to make sure that that doesn't move that much so one of the things we're going to do in addition is up here in the ducting behind where this plastic piece goes in up here where this plastic piece goes in there's a gap underneath you can't really see it or the camera can't even get to it 
but when you're doing this stick your hand into this vent and see if there's been uh, foil tape put in because that's what we're gonna do right now for this is we're gonna try and make sure we're not losing any air even if it is inside our own house we're now at the point where we're going to add our side piece in And just tuck it up out of the way and then we're going to add our finished foiled uh, section if you cut it small enough you might be able to get this whole piece in as one and so what we're going to do now is slide this piece into place we now have our sealed box we're going to run a piece of tape here we're gonna run another piece of tape up here. Then if we feel any like significant airflow, we'll tape over along the bottom. Pretty much we're done. Everything's finished. So as I was feeling around, I noticed that my biggest leaks were right here along the corners. And then uh, also there was just enough air seeping out all the way around where it was worth a quick wrap in the tape. Of note, when you do this, if you choose to, make sure you don't cover up your screw holes um, or at least remember where they are if you really want to cover them up. And so basically we're going to do all the steps for the uh, plastic pieces in reverse and put it back together. So here's what an actually clean filter looks like. And earlier I said you can do this every month or few months. I would advise, especially if you have dogs, to clean your filters. Very easy to do. Just spray it outside with some water soap if you want to. Um, every maybe two to three weeks. Just because we have lived in places, obviously just coming from New Orleans, with high humidity. Uh, we have lots of dog hair. Our dogs were shedding. Um, combination with the air circulating the way that it was before we did this just put moist dog hair in the air so it's really important that you clean those so my advice is every two three weeks and it's not hard to do yes we have three different units but it's really quick to clean them off and let them dry oh got it going um noticeably quiet quieter in our bedroom um also quieter in the living room so i think at least but um I think the intensity of the air blowing through the duct right there, I think that's noticeable. I don't know if you can see some of my little baby hairs kind of flowing around. But um, it's a little bit more intense than it used to be because that's now blocked off and diverting appropriately. So, um, One other thing you can do is if you're in the middle of doing this mod is go ahead and check all of these. And the way you do this, you just pop it off. And we're, you're just going to check and you just feel all the way around. In my case, mine all have been sealed properly. But I mean, it is really just dumping air. It's cranking. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. We hope this helped you if you chose to do this mod yourself. And uh, we hope you guys continue to power on and travel through life and live free every day. That's what we do. So like the video and subscribe. See you next time.